video, we're going to talk about um, dilation. And just as an intro, let's go over a couple of basics. Dilation is kind of like zooming in and out of a shape. So here, this is um, again from Math Open Reference. It's a great website. And in this applet, they're showing us that the blue rectangle here is our original rectangle. And then we've dilated that rectangle. In other words, we've, we've enlarged it or reduced it, depending on what scale factor we're using over here. So here the scale factor is 2, which means that every length in our red rectangle, the diagonals and the sides, are twice as long as the sides of our smaller rectangle. So A, B, C, D has been dilated by a scale factor of 2 to create A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. And you can think of dilation as zooming in and out. So here we're zoomed in on this blue rectangle and to a factor of 2. We've made it twice as large and we create our red rectangle. Well, as I decrease my scale factor, the shape becomes smaller and smaller. Right, one and a half. This now every length on our red rectangle is one and a half times longer and so forth. And then one, that gives us the exact same shape. And then to get smaller shapes, we just have a scale factor that's less than one, right? And this keeps going. So half, now our red rectangle has been dilated so that it is, every length is one half of the length of AD. And we can even show our distances here. Here they're showing that OB is from, excuse me, yeah, OB is from our center O to B, and that's 12. Well, now in, in O, B prime, that length is going to be 6. So the whole diagonal will be 24 on the blue rectangle and then 12 on the small rectangle. I mean, any way we look at this, it's been, the lengths have been halved, and they're just showing us that there. And it's neat that we can go all the way down to 0, and 0 brings us to a point. And that actually brings us to the next part of dilation. Um, these dilations are straightforward because they're all been dilated about this point in the middle O. What's cool is that we can actually move that point around, and we can dilate with different um, different centers. And some surprising things happen at first. I think we'll talk about why this makes sense. But now, in this first case here, as I move O around the center, just take a look at what's happening. As I move it, my red rectangle will move with the center. Right? If I move to the right, our rectangle goes to the right. If I move it down, our rectangle goes down, and so forth. Up, down, right, left, and right. And essentially what's happening, and oops, and this makes sense if you think about what's happening, um, we're trying to keep the same ratio in both rectangles. So you see this little triangle in the red rectangle? Well, the way that this red triangle has been centered about O is exactly the same as the way the blue rectangle is being centered around this point. Nothing's changing, it's just that we're keeping that relationship the same on a larger scale. So our red rectangle, which is the copy in this case, um, is, is kind of an indicator about how the blue rectangle is drawn as well. It's just, it helps me see what's happening. So like in this case right here, this distance, here's our center. We build this blue rectangle around that center. And you notice that these lines are showing these diagonals from the center to the vertexes, the corners of the rectangle. So these two long vertexes right here are going to be twice as long as these vertexes right here. And you can see that in the numbers. O to B prime is 9.9. .9. And that's half of O to B, which is from here all the way to B. So we have all half ratios, uh, a ratio of 2 to 1, right? The, the red rectangle is half of the blue rectangle in terms of its lengths. And, and the shape is even the same. I mean, here, if we go from O to A prime and then down to D prime, we get this little triangle. Well, then if we scale it up, right, to our original, we have this triangle. The shape remains the same. And we can, you know, we can recenter it, I think. There it goes. Now, what's a little, looks a little bizarre in this applet is that what happens if the scale factor is larger? So now our original is the blue rectangle and the red rectangle is the copy again but now the the original is the smaller rectangle so now this is a little surprising if I if I recenter if I move up look what happens to the red rectangle 
it looks like it moves down a little bit. And if I move the center down, the red rectangle is in fact moving up, or it looks like it's moving up. And I guess there's a couple ways to look at this. Um, so let's let's talk about this in a couple of ways. So first of all, it's why it doesn't make sense that if I move the center down in the original copy, that the red one seems to move up. And again, the idea is that these two rectangles um, are still centered around the same point. That's the key. O has to be the center of both rectangles. So in the blue rectangle, right, we have this shape right here. Now in the red rectangle, if if it moved up, right, if I started here and then I moved down, if it didn't also, if it didn't move up, sorry, then you wouldn't still have this other larger shape right here because it's still centered around O. It needs to be moved up so that it can look the same as the blue rectangle in regard to the center. So if I move to the left, it's going to move to the right. If I move to the right, it's going to move to the left. And then if we just rescale, you can see that happening here. Don't, you can think of it in the same way. If I move the red rectangle up, right? Now what's happening is that we're basing where the red rectangle is going to be on the blue copy, so it's on the reverse. As I move the center down in the, to the left on the blue rectangle, the same thing has to happen on the red. And let me just try to, because I'm having a hard time, I hope I'm not confusing us too much here. Um, let's just do this. Here's our center point, right? If I move down, let me just take a little screenshot of this, and we're going to mess around with it. Let's look at why the red rectangle had to move up. Let's see if I can pull this up. Okay. So now, again, let me just draw these lines that they're showing us. Both rectangles have to be centered on this point, so that means that this distance right here, from O to B, has to be, um, I think our scale factor here is one and a half. So the, the distance from O to B prime has to be along the same direction and one and a half times longer. So here from O to C prime has to be one and a half times longer than O to C. And notice that they're in the same line right there. That's the key, it's how you can always tell where these rectangles should go. Whatever line I draw from O to the vertex in one rectangle should also line right up with the vertex in another. And this, this goes all the way around. I mean, these two lines from O to the vertices, if we just extend them, will hit the corners of the larger rectangle. And my lines are a little bit off, sorry. And that's the idea. So you can always tell if a rectangle is off because you won't have this nice line crossing through both vertices. So that being said, if so I move this, this, I'm sorry, I move this vertice from the center from here, down here, and the red rectangle moved up. Well, what if it moved, what if it moved down, right? So first it starts around the rectangle, and then it moves down, so it looks something like this. Why would this not make sense? So this is our question mark one right here. Let's call this, and let's, let's use pink. We'll highlight these points, let me use a bigger stroke here. Uh, what should we call this? Um, uh, I want to spell it out in a way that we can't mistake it. Oh, let's just call it the next letters. Very exciting. E, sorry, F, G, and H. Now, E, F, G, and H are not a dilation around the center. And you can tell because if I go from the center to the vertex, right? Notice how it doesn't cross through these points right here. When this happens, you, you have, it's still a dilation, but it's around a new center, right? If you notice in this case, O is almost at the exact center of E, F, G, H. We've moved it in a different way and gave it a new center, which is fine, it's still a dilation. You can ask, you can do that, you can, you can dilate around new centers. It's just that um, we're trying to dilate um, two rectangles around the same center. And here we're not doing that. We've created a new center relative to the rectangle. This, this O is now almost in the middle of EFGH. E, but if we go back, let me just look at this image right here. O is not in the center of ABCD. It's in the bottom quad, it's in the bottom 
it's, toward, it's almost all the way down, A, B, A, B, C, D. It has to, the same thing has to happen in our red rectangle. It has to be almost all the way down. And the only confusing thing is then, again, what happens here? Why does this make sense? For the same reason. If I extend my lines here, right, as I move my point up, the red rectangle is based on the blue one. So where the center of O is in the, in the blue rectangle has to have the same relative position in the red rectangle. And I, I think I'm talking myself in circles here, but the dilation, again, is like an expansion of a shape, almost as if you're zooming in and out based on this called the scale factor. And that's just the number you're multiplying all of your lengths by. So we'll look at some examples, and if I haven't confused you too much, this will help. Thanks.